What's up, my friends? One more time. Now, um, I made it to the Olivar. I'm going to show you the trees a little bit. There's uh, several varieties of olives in this plot. And just a few years ago, my parents bought the land. It's one hectare, uh, about a, a little over acre and a half. And the, the plot didn't look like this. It looked like this. Um, thicket of all the native vegetation. We just got some rain last night. It was super beautiful. Um, you don't get a lot of rain in the winter here in Cordoba, uh, but last night was a nice, nice rain. Look at that little funky gall. Anyway, we have some uh, the the olivar. The plot was just overtaken by the by the native uh, vegetation, all the thickets, um, crowding, competing for light. The soils are really good. And uh, yeah, we came with my good friend, Massimo. Um, we told them we were in the US working together uh, in a tree company. And uh, I told them I'm coming over two weeks uh, to Argentina to to prune the olive trees that my family has. Oh, snaps, there's a hanger. And uh, and he said, uh, well, my, fam my family has a tradition of inviting ourselves to trips. Can I invite myself to your trip? And I said, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna be vacationing. I'm gonna be uh, pruning, 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 pruning. And, uh, and he said, awesome, I'll bring my, I'll bring my saddle, I bring my ropes, bring my helmet, and we can, I'll help you prune. And uh, it's been two, two weeks of very intense work. We were doing uh, between uh, three and five trees each a day. And then my dad and my brother were on the ground you know, processing the the pruning, uh, processing the branches, cutting them into smaller, stacking them so they're once it's ready to be moved out and you know placed, the they're easy to remove. Some areas uh, they it, they process a lot. Some areas they didn't process too much. And uh, these trees were um, in neglect for about 30 years. Nobody did anything. Uh, the, the locals would come and um, help themselves to the, to the olive production, but that was all that was, you know, being, being done. Uh, nobody was pruning, nobody was uh, running irrigation. As you can see here, the irrigation comes from these acequias these little channels and they come from uh, about a mile and a half away from the river and there's a whole sequia system in the town and uh, you know you just have to uh, pay a couple hundred pesos per watering and they open you have like a two hour watering window and my dad uh, started investing in watering the olivar again and dug out all these new channels and the channels go all the way through the property and around and it's a style of flood, flood irrigation um, some areas that were bare and there was a uh, space my dad brought some other other trees, there's a couple of lemons there and a fig and uh, they go, they're doing their thing. But anyway, um, did a lot of work, pruned. Uh, there's 90 trees plus the neighbor's trees, which 
are you know on the property they they're not looked at looked after uh oh snap that's a big all hanger look at that anyway we went pretty hard on some trees that were like you know totally way too big and um it was difficult to to really get to them to the production of olives we went really hard on some um on some others we just did a height reduction by like 25 percent 30 uh, but mainly the the work order was uh opening up the centers and uh anyway there's they're still pretty tall uh i don't see my dad climbing all the way up there or getting a ladder so the idea is to just uh keep coming on a yearly basis in the winter and uh doing some pruning and uh those birds that you hear are the the wild parrots that come and knock out all the olives and bite them so i'm trying trying to figure out solutions for those but they they don't really bother they're not that that annoying uh you can deal with them and yeah um i just wanted to show you these trees uh we're gonna keep coming there we go that the the recipe uh is uh five years five year pruning project so in five years we should be able to bring them down at 25 percent each year until we have some vigorous low branches that we can keep again as our permanent branches um, just keep reducing height keep reducing height and uh, making them so they're friendly for harvest um, all I've been eating is uh, lots of olives now I've been eating a lot of good food but the jar of olives uh, comes out every with every meal and uh they're so delicious so good i'm gonna bring some back to the u.s share with my wife and children and friends and family over there and yeah we have a really beautiful project uh, and the cool piece of it is that it's a family project my mom comes out and she was making us lunches and uh, my parents live about 300 yards away, a couple of city blocks away. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really sweet. Just getting to spend time with my dad and my brother, and my friend Massimo. She's been, uh, I believe, she's been really enjoying the the town and uh, getting to know my family you know my family's uh full of uh parties they're always together uh playing music singing eating drinking wine and beer and pretty pretty good uh lifestyle uh you know as long as there's food on the table pretty people are pretty uh, relaxed about their income there's not a lot of uh, upward mobility in this town but uh, people seem pretty happy with what they have and it's not a lot um, it's, it's a good lesson for a lot of us who chase chase the dollar around uh, here we have a little Quebracho is a um, Shinopsis tree. And uh, my dad and my brother really love this. Uh, it's a very, very dense wood. Um, takes, takes a lot of years to grow these trees. And uh, most of them have been logged by the railroad, railroads. 
um, when they built the railroads, they took the, all the old specimens and, you know, um, you don't see them very big anymore. Uh, so I was telling them, oh, let's cut this one. It's too close to the, to this olive tree. And they're like, no, 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 leave that one. We, we, we want, we want all the cabrachos that we can. Um, I'm not sure of uh, their biological importance, but I'm sure they're big, ecological importance. Um, there's, you know, native trees, they, they definitely have their benefits. And people use a lot of um, wood burning to keep warm in the, in the winter. So I was telling my dad, let's rent a big chipper and chip all this stuff. And he was like, no, no, no. This is so for for the coming winters. And and it kind of changes your mind a little bit of like, you know, the resources we have. And sometimes in California, we, we chip a whole tree. And uh, that would be months and months of, months and months worth of firewood for one family here. Uh, at the same time, um, there's, you know, there's not a lot of use. Uh, people don't use wood chips to top dress their gardens. And you understand that? What the? There went my brother. Anyway, I was going to walk to his house and go give him a visit. But uh, I guess I'll go over there and just hang out until they come back. Of course, I don't have uh, cellular data here because it costs too much money. So I'm only in contact with people when I have internet. Uh, so anyway, I also didn't tell them I was gonna come by. I just try to make my way over there. But I figure I show you the Olivar. This is a really cool project. I'm so happy that uh, we have this piece of land we're talking with my dad about clearing a little bit of the thickets there and uh, building a little warehouse, something small so we can store tools and, um, you know, store things uh, that will make it easier on us when it's time for harvest and be able to not have to take all the all the product out of the out of the site back to my parents house even though they live close seems a little funny to be transporting so much when we have all the space so that's the idea to to build a little building maybe like a two car garage style enough to park one vehicle and be able to pull it into the shed and offload and you know go back but anyway i am super super stoked so grateful to have my family here uh, there's some good neighbors we we pruned uh, one of the neighbor's trees and helped them out that was fun uh it was hilarious because we got paid in pesos and you know you made the you make the conversion and you know you're making uh you know, very, very little money. <laughs> you're, you're making a uh, $100 on a job that in the US you would charge um, $1,600 and that would still be cheap. So I was laughing, you know, and, and uh, my dad was saying, no, that's decent money. And I was like, yeah, it is decent money. Uh, but uh, I was telling him how much we charge for tree work in the US and and it's a different world, you know. Um, anyway, very peaceful place. Uh, unless there's three chainsaws running, then it can be a little noisy. But it's land. It's land and it's trees. And they're full trees. They're old. Not too old. But um, they, have a, they have a really cool project here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I will probably upload videos of this Olivar every 
six months or so or when I am able to visit. But until then, keep planting trees and keep doing some good work that links you to the land. You, we all need to be linked to our land, whether it's in San Marcos Sierras or it's out in California, New Zealand, wherever you are. Uh, just, you know, do your best to be a steward of the land um, and be a, be a, um, a good example for the children because they're, they're, they're watching us. All right, my friends, neighbors, plant more trees. Bye.